back to the channel. Dave here, Stance is everything. And we are back in the garage talking about my 1951 GMC pickup. For those of you who've been following this build, a lot of this information is going to seem a little bit repetitive. But for those of you who have just tuned in, today we are going to be talking about my engine in my truck. I'm also going to try something new today. I'm going to do my very, very best not to say um the entire video. This might mean there are a lot of weird cuts where I have to retake things. I'm going to try my best because I watched the last videos or the last few videos. I try and get better every video I do and I realize I say I'm a lot. So I am going to try and prevent that by thinking ahead while I'm talking. It could be a struggle. All right, first off, to start things off, I have completed the second bracket for my bed mount. So I can cross that off later in the video. I'm going to let this cool before I do a little bit more mock-up on it just to make sure that this hole is good and everything is cool. But I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. I actually think it's better than the one that I showed in the last video, which is kind of always how things work. But we are not here to talk about that. We're not here to talk about my frame. We're here to talk about my engine. So let me put a light under my engine bay, which is all the way up there, and we'll talk about what's going on. All right, so we're going to take a look at the engine in my truck. Anyone who knows these trucks know that they did not come with an LS motor, obviously. They also didn't even come with the V8 from the factory. They were all inline six models. And mine did have an inline six on it when it was on the big frame. Let me cut to a photo of my truck before I even started it. When the truck arrived, it had a six cylinder in it, a straight six. I never even tried to start that motor. I kind of regret that now because it would have been cool to hear if it did run and see if that happened. But really my goal was always to put an LS in it. Why an LS? I mean, if you're watching this video, you like LS motors, you know why people swap LS motors in this truck. So I don't really need to get into explaining that too much. What I am gonna do in this video is explain what's going on under the engine bay of my truck. You're gonna see me splice in a bunch of different videos and and voice overlays. I shot the talking part of this video at 11.30 on a uh, Friday. And then the and next day I got out and did some videos some walking around when I had more light and could crank the engine over. So if you see things popping around and in and out, that's why I had to make sure to get everything that I needed done because we are coming up on the holidays and I don't have a ton of time to work on this video because I should probably be spending some time with my family really, really, really soon. Hopefully you're doing some of that as well. All right, let's get into talking about the motor. All right, what we're looking at here is the engine for my truck and the engine bay. So first off, let's start things off with the firewall. That is the LS fabrication firewall fillers. I have three fillers in there, one, two, and three. I believe those are the Kalinda models. They give you the bead rolled panels and you weld them in. And then I've got the firewall fenders painted Mazda Arctic White, which is A4D. And then the roof is the same color, but it's got a bit of flake in it. Thing in this motor that makes it look the way it does is this custom intake made by Izzy Fab. This is a custom piece that Jeff made. It loops around and goes back there. I know a lot of people are like, hey, you're going to get some heat soak. Really, with an LS motor in these trucks, there is not a ton of space to put the intake. I didn't want to put it through an inner fender. I've already modified this inner fender for my alternator. I didn't want to do anything like crazy like that. This isn't a drag truck. It's not, not going to be in the world with a filter there. I also have Holly coil pack covers. Pretty simple bolt-on affairs. I didn't want to relocate my coils. Again, I'm trying to keep this motor simple, simple, simple so I can go down the road. I did have to notch this one to clear the alternator. And I actually ended up shortening this one quite a bit to uh, clear the firewall because the motor, as you can see, is down and back. It is mounted because I have a G-body front end. It is mounted with dirty dingo mounts that allow me to slide the motor forward and back. So that's why it is down as far as it is. I think it's pretty cool. Also, I do have a hood. It is in the corner there. It is gonna go on. This, these trucks need to have hoods. You can't run them really without a hood. I mean, I might for a little bit, but ultimately I do want a hood. Next up, we've got the cooling system. I have a whole video on the cooling system for this truck. Proform 123 radiator kit, which comes with the radiator, shroud, and fan, and you just drop it in. Jeff made all of these hard-lined hoses for me as well and I'm really stoked on how it all looks. Last but not least, as far as engine modifications go, we obviously have this Bitec intake manifold. So this is a loaded LS, Ultimate LS intake manifold kit. I'm not running a Bitec computer, but I am running their intake manifold, throttle body, and injectors. This is actually a Holly throttle cable mount. They do fit the Bitec EFI intake manifold, if anyone's curious. And I got that on Amazon because for whatever reason, Phytech does not include it in the kit. Low car unit that goes to a low car pedal inside of the truck. Don't worry, we're gonna hop inside the truck because we next need to talk about 
the engine management and why the engine does not run. I got this LS motor from a drift guy who stopped the build and I picked it up. It was bone stock when I got it. It now has 799 heads and a BTR no springs required cam, blue valve springs and that's pretty much it. And then the 4L60 has a shift kit and upgraded Corvette servos in it. Very, very, very basic stuff. Part of the reason that I kept the motor build pretty mild is because I have a rear end in this truck that isn't rated for a ton of power. It's from an 88 Trans Am and it's supposed to be factory rated for about 300 horsepower. I'm hoping this motor will put down about that to the wheels, but we'll see once I get it dynoed, if I get it dynoed. So that's why it is pretty mild. And you know, 4L60s are notorious for four neutrals, so I didn't want to go too crazy power wise. Anyway, let's get back to talking about what's going on here, why it isn't running, and why I chose this motor. All right, let's move inside the truck where we've got a little bit more light and we can talk about what's going on inside of the truck. All right, so looking inside the truck, like I said, I have a low car pedal and then I have a BP EFI harness in this truck and that is a factory computer. And that factory computer is the main reason that this truck is not running at this moment. So I'm going to cut to a different uh, clip tomorrow of me trying to crank over this truck. Hey everyone, you got Daytime Dave here and even more rare, you have Weekend Daytime Dave here to show you the truck in a couple of different starting scenarios and why it's not running yet. So I was able to sneak out in the garage today because I needed to do some work to my Mazda. For those of you who don't know, that is also on air. It's been on air for probably about nine years now and the compressor finally went and I don't have the opportunity to get a compressor obviously with it being December 23rd. So I just quickly ran a feed to it that I can fill it manually and that'll do for now until I can get a compressor. Since I was out here anyway, I figured I would get a couple of starting scenarios of the truck. So I'm gonna mount the GoPro somewhere where you can see the motor starting and then I'm gonna use my camera on the inside to explain what's happening and add a little bit of substance to this video. All right, so I've got a GoPro outside filming the engine right now and we are inside of the truck. I'm filming with my cell phone right now, it's flipped around and we are gonna try and start the truck without giving it any gas. And you can see how it struggles because it does not have enough fuel on idle to stay running. Left the battery on charge all night, so it should be fine to do a couple of cranks and we'll get a good idea of what really is going on here. Yes, by the way, that is a check engine light. I do have a check engine light in this truck. All right, let's see if it starts. It almost made a fool out of me. It did try and run there and you could hear it for a little bit trying to run, trying to figure out what's going on. You can see it hunting. That was with giving it no gas. I'm going to now give it a bit of throttle and you'll hear this thing fire up. Okay, so you heard it die at the end there. That should give you a really good example of what I'm talking about. Without any throttle, it just falls flat on its face. So it does need a little bit of fuel on idle, and that's what I need to do to get this thing moving around. And that's actually gonna be my next step. So I know before I talked about ordering tires, I'm gonna skip ahead on that and actually get everything in position where I want it to be, get an exhaust put on, get a tune, and then get tires. Because why should I get tires when I can't actually drive the truck because it doesn't have a tune? So we're going to go back to nighttime Dave. He's going to pick up the outro and then we will see you shortly after Christmas. So I know ultimately this video is pretty short and uh, it's pretty much a clip show, but it was kind of the best video that I could do given that the holidays are really soon and this is going to drop on Christmas Eve basically. And I really wanted to address why the, the truck isn't really running yet and you haven't seen any driving videos yet. Now we're approaching winter here in Ontario, so obviously you're not going to see much of this driving, but I do really hope to have it on the road for next year. So we're going to keep plugging away with a lot of fabrication and loose ends and stuff like that, and hopefully we will have the truck driving for next spring. That is my goal. I got a couple of things that might stand in the way of that, but that is definitely, definitely my goal. So hopefully you are still on board for the rest of the work that I'm going to be doing. Hopefully this video wasn't too boring and explained a few things, mainly why my motor and transmission and all that combo isn't taking me down the road yet. 
thanks for watching this video Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone who celebrates I know someone's gonna be celebrating something even if it isn't Christmas thanks thanks again for watching this video hopefully I made it all the way through without saying um and hopefully I was able to get some running video of this in the daytime so that this video isn't just me blabbing away we'll catch you in the next one it's not gonna be too long